Finally, our last type of organic molecule that comes up in biology is um, right here, the nucleic acids. Nucleic acids do a very important job. Nucleic acids are the way that, that we can store information and pass it on from one generation to the next. And so there are two major types of nucleic acids that are involved in this process, and we will be elaborating on these in a later chapter, but let's just introduce them right now. DNA, um, DNA is short for deoxyribonucleic acid, and this is a type of nucleic acid. This is the type that stores all of our genetic information, and it encodes the instructions for making RNA. Um, so RNA, coming down the list here, RNA is another type of nucleic acid, and RNA contains instructions for making proteins, which we just learned about. So this is kind of an interesting connection, um, since proteins, it turns out, proteins direct most of life's processes, like we just saw, what do enzymes do? Enzymes are a type of protein. Okay, um, ultimately, the DNA is directing a lot of life's processes. So DNA encodes information for making RNA, RNA encodes information for making proteins, and then proteins are like the worker bees inside of the human body. They actually do a lot of the, the work that needs to happen. So talking about nucleic acids, um, how are, what, are these, what are these macromolecules made from? They are made from subunits called nucleotides, and each nucleotide has three major ingredients. It has a sugar, um, it has a nitrogen base, and it has a phosphate group. So let me show you some pictures here. These are nucleotides that make up DNA. And right here, I'm circling one complete nucleotide. So again, it's got three components. It has a sugar, that's this part right here. It has a phosphate group, that's this part here. And it has a nitrogen base. This is a molecule that has nitrogen in its structure, and it's called a nitrogen base. That nitrogen base is the thing that differs from one nucleotide to the next. Okay, they all have in common the sugar and the phosphate group, um, but that nitrogen base gives different characteristics to each nucleotide. So in DNA, there are f these four different nucleotides are possible, and a lot of times they get symbolized just with a single letter. This nucleotide is adenine, um, which would be symbolized with an A. Thymine gets symbolized with a T. Cytosine with a capital C. And then guanine with a capital G. The structure of DNA, so if we take these nucleotides and connect them together, um, the overall structure of DNA looks something like this. So what ends up happening is um, there are connections between individual nucleotides. So right here is one nucleotide that has been circled. Um, right below it, here is another nucleotide that I'm circling. And right below it, here is another nucleotide that I'm circling. So you can see they've, they've, got, uh, they've got connections. Covalent bonds have been formed between them. And that whole chain of nucleotides tends to pair up with another complete chain of nucleotides that have been strung together. So DNA ends up being what we would call double-stranded. And what is it that holds together these two strands? It's actually just hydrogen bonding, hydrogen bonding between the nitrogen bases. So if you look in the middle, okay, uh, let's just take a look at this one. This adenine is hydrogen bonding with a thymine from the other strand over here. So those hydrogen bonds help to stabilize this whole structure. And there are hydrogen bonds between each of the bases. Okay, some of them have three hydrogen bonds, um, others have two hydrogen bonds. All right, so in DNA, these are the basic pairing rules. Adenine likes to hydrogen bond with thymine and vice versa. And guanine likes to hydrogen bond with cytosine and vice versa. Okay, so A always pairs with T, G always pairs with C. If we're talking about RNA, how is its structure different? Well, interestingly, RNA doesn't form double strands usually. Usually it's just a single strand of nucleotides. And the big difference is that the sugar 
um, it's a different sugar molecule. Instead of being deoxyribose, it's just ribose. So a slightly different sugar molecule involved. Um, and then the other difference is that, you should be pointing over here to RNA. Um, the other difference is that we don't have any thiamines. Instead, we have uracil. So this is a different nitrogen base that shows up in RNA. So those are the two, well, three big differences, single-stranded, the sugar that's involved, and which bases in, are involved. Okay, before we completely wrap out this section, there's one other nucleotide that's very important. Um, this is not really involved in information necessarily, information storage and, and transmittal, but rather this is very important in terms of energy in cells. ATP, this is a nucleotide that is like an energy shuttle. Um, it's the way that energy can be sort of retrieved and um, made use of very quickly inside of cells. And we'll be seeing this molecule a lot. So I just want to mention it here before we end the chapter. And it's very similar to adenine in RNA, but it's got a couple of extra phosphate groups attached. And the fact that there are phosphate groups attached, let me get the picture up here. Um, see how there are three phosphates connected all together? This is kind of interesting. It's really hard to take a phosphate group and shove it up against another phosphate group because they both have these giant negatively charged electron clouds around them. So it's really hard to bring them close together. This is kind of like compressing a spring. Uh, there's a lot of stored energy in that bond. So if we were to come along with scissors and break that bond, whoops, break that bond, um, what would happen is this phosphate group would go flying off. It's gonna release a lot of energy in the process. So this molecule as a whole, it's got a lot of energy stored in these bonds between the phosphate groups. So um, it turns out this is like the universal energy molecule in living things. Living things can really use this molecule to power a lot of different processes. And then our bodies can also um, rebuild this molecule. We have ways of like taking the energy from food and storing it in the form of this molecule. So we'll be learning about that a little bit later on.